أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين آمنوا والذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات لا نكلف نفسا إلا وسعها أولئك أصحاب الجنة هم فيها خالدون ونزعنا ما في صدورهم من غل تجري من تحتهم الأنهار وقالوا الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله لقد جاءت رسل ربنا بالحق ونودوا أن تلكم الجنة أورثتموها بما كنتم تعملون ونادى أصحاب الجنة أصحاب النار أن قد وجدنا ما وعدنا ربنا حقا فهل وجدتم ما وعد ربكم حقا قالوا نعم فأذن مؤذن بينهم اللعنة الله على الظالمين الذين يصدون عن سبيل الله ويبغونها عوجا وهم بالآخرة كافرون وبينهما حجاب وعلى الأعراف رجال يعرفون كلا بسيماهم ونادوا أصحاب الجنة أن سلام عليكم لم يدخلوها وهم يطمعون وَإِذَا صُرِفَتْ أَبْصَارُهُمْ تِلْقَاءَ أَصْحَابِ النَّارِ قَالُوا رَبَّنَا لَا تَجْعَلْنَا مَعَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We commence by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him and his entire household Every single companion of his, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and may he bless all those who have struggled and strived through the generations in a way that today the deen has come to us. And may he make us from amongst those who can struggle and strive in whatever way possible for us in order to preserve the deen, to protect it, to learn it, to convey it to others. And inshallah, may we be an asset for our own children and a means of their guidance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us firstly, and may he then help us to guide our own offspring and to help one another in terms of guidance. Beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, mashallah, a beautiful place in a beautiful city, beautiful people, and inshallah, we have a topic that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be as beautiful. Tonight we are speaking about traveling light. One of two things, either light that is nur that travels or traveling light in terms of weight. And I think the second part of the title clarifies that we are going to be concentrating on the latter, which means excess baggage that is unnecessary. We do not want it and it will actually harm us. We need to get rid of it and we need to understand why we should get rid of it and how to get rid of it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our journey into paradise very easy. 
as we would like to commence on this topic, an introduction is extremely necessary. Yesterday we focused in the introduction on why we were created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's important today that we reiterate and repeat that we have been created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to prepare for the day we are going to be meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is it. And I need to be focused on that. I pray that Allah grant me the ability to focus on that at all times. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help me prepare for the day that I will meet him and to help us all prepare for that day in a way that when we meet him, he will be pleased with us and we definitely pleased with what he has chosen for us. I mean, my brothers and sisters, in this short life we have, it is definitely not worth our while carrying that which is going to be burdensome in this life as well as in the next. And in the next hour, we will be hearing, inshallah, what is it that is harmful for us? Because as we know, when we talk of cholesterol, for example, there are two types of cholesterol. If someone is to tell you, be careful of the scale, make sure you don't have something heavy on it. Someone else might tell you, well, if it is good, then you need that weight. Like the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam speaks about the weight that is good on the day of Qiyamah, such as the last hadith that appears in Sahih al-Bukhari, and I'm sure we may have come across it. Kalimatani khafifatani ala lisani thaqilatani fil mizani habibatani ila rahmani subhanallahi wa bihamdihi subhanallahi al-azim. That praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanallahi wa bihamdihi subhanallahi al-azim is as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam very light on the tongue, which means it has no weight to utter. When we say it, it's very easy. Yet, the same two words are very heavy upon the scales of good deeds. That is the HDL. You know, when we speak of cholesterol, you have the high density lipoproteins. Subhanallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us good health and to rectify the cholesterol levels in a way that the bad cholesterol is low and the good one is high. Allahu Akbar. Look at it. Before we used to read cholesterol and say it is high or low. And nowadays we've separated it into two and we say some of it is good for you and some of it is bad for you. So the scales we are talking about and the baggage and the weight we are talking about is the bad weight. As for the good weight which is being mentioned in this hadith, we need it. It is definitely that HDL that will help us Eradicate the LDL. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and assistance. So the hadith says, these words are very light on the tongue, very heavy upon the scales, very loved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi. Subhanallahi al-azim. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Praise be upon Allah. Every form of praise. And all the attributes of goodness before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we declare them and we utter them. The great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indeed the greatest. And he is indeed the one, the supreme, the irresistible. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. So this hadith, the reason why I cite it here is in order to clarify that some weight and baggage that we speak about could be good. And some of it could be bad. What we want to concentrate on today is excess. Excess meaning that which is not good. Today when you are overweight, you become worried. Especially the sisters, subhanallah, a little bulge on the belly and suddenly they become depressed sometimes. You know, they begin to say, I need to look like this and like that. My beloved sisters, if you are healthy, given good health by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you are not a bag of lazy bones, then inshallah you are heading in the right direction. But the minute we become a bag of lazy bones, then even if we are the slimmest, our life will be upside down. Because that is excess baggage in terms of laziness. May Allah protect us. I'd like to draw another example. When we say traveling, we talk of sometimes making a journey. When you are traveling by aircraft, and I'm sure we are aware of it, you are allowed a certain number of kilograms or sometimes a number of pieces of baggage. 
The minute you have more, there is a disaster. There is a bad feeling when you are told to open your bags in the middle of the airport with everyone watching all your little sweets and chocolates and perhaps sometimes your you know, private matters of underwear and so on that is now being changed, it, you know, moved from one piece to another in the presence of everyone around. Very embarrassing. But it was your fault. The hadith says, Allahu Akbar, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. In fact, it is the statement of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, Hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu, wa zinuha qabla an tuzanu. Take account of your deeds before they shall be taken account of. And weigh them before they are weighed. This is talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala weighing our deeds on the day of judgment. But now if we had to arrive at an airport without having had the feeling or doubt, or without even knowing, for example, that we were overweight, then we are the ones who are foolish. You know, one day I entered the airport and I had a baggage which was excess. So I looked at them and I saw an individual next to me who was, mashallah, quite big in size. And they had a little bag. The bag went. And I looked and I said, but you know, collectively myself and my bags make up less than this man and his baggage. Allahu Akbar. They looked at me, they said, we're not worried about what you weigh, but the baggage you brought. I said, well, if that was the case, subhanallah, you know, we are getting onto the same aircraft. I don't know the difference it makes. But those are rules. And these are the rules that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set in terms of how to get into the akhirah as well. Whether you were weighing a lot in the dunya or not physically is besides the point. You need to make sure your deeds have the correct amount of good in them for you to tip the scale towards the right direction. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this in Surah Al-Anbiya. He says, وَنَضَعُ الْمَوَازِينَ الْقِسْطَ لِيَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ فَلَا تُظْلَمُ نَفْسٌ شَيْئًا وَإِنْ كَانَ مِثْقَالَ حَبَّةٍ مِنْ خَرْدَلٍ أَتَيْنَا بِهَا وَكَفَى بِنَا حَاسِبِينَ الله أكبر الله says and on that day we shall place the scales of justice so all our deeds will be weighed. Literally weighed on the scales of justice. The right side, the left side. And nobody shall be oppressed at all. And even if it is the weight of a mustard seed of an action, we will bring it forth. Allahu Akbar. And Allah says, we are sufficient as those who take account. May Allah bless us. May he make that day easy for us. So there will be a scale literally and our deeds will be weighed properly. And people sometimes have an issue saying, how are these deeds going to be weighed? Today, they weigh, well, the term weigh might be a different word. We might have a better word to use. But today, if you have seated, if you have sat on a chair and you are seated for a while and you get up, they actually have apparatus to measure when you sat on the chair from the heat that your body has left on that particular chair. Are you aware of it? Subhanallah. They can do it today. The forensic test that they have to figure out what went on here to the degree that they can tell you when last someone spoke in this hall. Allahu Akbar. Technology has gone very far and wide. People say our deeds are written in books. How are they going to be weighed? Today we have a small chip, smaller than the size of my fingernail. And it is weighed in gigabytes and kilobytes. They tell you, if you look at your mobile phone, this is how much is remaining and this is how much you have used. This is how much is used for documents. This is how much for photographs. This is how much for videos. This is how much for this and for that. Allahu Akbar. And we were busy sitting and thinking, how are they going to weigh our deeds? These are your statements. These are your actions. This is how much you looked with your eyes. This is how much you walked with your feet. This is how much you obeyed Allah. This is how much of this type of sin you committed. This is how much istighfar you engaged in. And the total balance is X. May our good outweigh the bad. I mean, beautiful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us again in Surah Luqman with the story of Luqman al-Hakim, the wise, 
When he speaks to his son, he says, Ya Bunaiya, oh my son, oh my young son. Innaha intakumith kala habbatim min khordal fatakum fi sakhratin au fi samawati au fi al ardi yati bihallah. Oh my son. I would like you to know that even if it is the mustard's weight or size of a deed and it is in the darkest rock, you know, inside a rock is something very, very eloquent, which means you are now describing something really grand. If someone knows what is under the rock, it is okay. It's a big deal, but it's a bigger deal to know what is inside the rock. Allahu Akbar or anywhere in the skies or the earth. He says, my son, you must know Allah will bring it forth. Allah is going to bring your deeds. The way you looked, Allah will bring it forth. You are answerable and so am I. <laughs> Indeed, the faculty of hearing, the faculty of seeing, and even your thoughts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to question you about. You are answerable in that regard. Someone might ask, what about my thoughts that were involuntary? If you entertained the thought and brought it upon you and allowed it to continue, that is when you will be answerable because those thoughts are then translated into deeds. Allahu Akbar. But if something crossed your mind and you quickly flicked it off by the will of Allah, you are not answerable for that. And this is why some people think there is a contradiction in the Sharia. Sometimes we are taught that, you know, when a person has planned something, intended something, and they have not engaged in it, they are not going to be punishable. Correct. They will not be punished. When you have planned a sin and you did not engage in it or execute it, you are not going to be punished by a mere intention of a sin. But you will be questioned about that intention. Not necessarily punished, but questioned. And if that intention or that thought was allowed to continue to the degree that it led to another type of a sin, then definitely answerable, punishable. But my brothers and sisters, I want to make one thing very loud and clear. We are followers of the religion of mercy. We are really followers of the religion of mercy. When we speak about the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it should raise our hair. And it should make us feel that we need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you need to know that the moment you say, Oh Allah, forgive me. I am a weak slave of yours. I have wronged. I have erred. And if you are serious about that statement and you mean it, and you are promising Allah that you want to change your ways and habits, believe me, you have wiped out all the bad that you have done in a flash. Subhanallah without becoming embarrassed or exposed or without being a person who is disgraced in any way by confessing to a fellow human being or to anyone else your sins are wiped out totally just between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is the religion of mercy so when you get to an airport they make you take it out physically but with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for as long as you're alive, you say, I'm sorry. Imagine if we could do that in the airport where you come up with 50 kgs and you're only allowed 25. And you look at them and you just say, I'm sorry, I won't do it again. Subhanallah. If that could work, wow. I think all of us would actually really do the wrong thing every time. Allahu Akbar. But with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, wallahi, it works. This is why the fact that you are breathing and I am breathing, is part of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For as long as you are alive, you can rectify and correct that baggage and you can ensure that you remove it and eradicate it. Subhanallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness and to make us from amongst those who realize and who understand, who rectify and who make mends. My brothers and sisters, the question is, so what is it that brings about this bad baggage? What is it? Point number one, Al-Ishraqu Billah. To associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is adding dead weight onto yourself, which will destroy your deen, your dunya, and your akhirah. 
your life, your spirituality, as well as your life after death. This is why Allah says, Allah has made it incumbent upon himself. Allah says he will not forgive association of partnership with him in worship. He will not forgive that. But anything else he may forgive whatever he wishes. Now, to understand this, it means if you die in a condition that you have not repented from association of partnership with Allah, then you are doomed. But otherwise, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, the bulk of them were mushrikeen prior to accepting Islam. They used to associate little pieces of food as gods with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sometimes worship them besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when they turned their ways and habits and they came back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they converted or reverted or they left their ways and habits, everything was wiped out. So this verse is not referring to a person who has died after having made tawbah or after having repented from the shirk he or she may have been involved in. But it is referring to he or she who has died in a condition where they have not done anything about that excess baggage. It is the worst type of baggage you could ever have have. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May he make us turn to the right path. And this is why we say sometimes when people speak about shirk and they say, you know, this is association of partnership with Allah. That is association of partnership with Allah. Some people become agitated with that. But why? Do not become agitated. Shaitan is he who makes us agitated. And then we start saying, brother, everything is shirk, isn't it? Just leave me alone. Wallahi, it is better for you to abstain from something that people are debating whether it is shirk or not, than to engage in it and risk your entire life and even your life after death. Common logic. We gave that example yesterday, saying that if a person told you that this meat is halal and another person told you this meat is haram none of them told you the meat is farad allahu akbar none of them told you it is compulsory if you left it you will not have entered the probability of having engaged in something doubtful or even wrong you have saved yourself this is what the hadith says of nu'man ibn bashir radiyallahu an that we often quote in sahih muslim but if you engaged in it, you have put your life at risk with a 50% chance of you having done something absolutely unacceptable. Why should we do that? Imagine if someone has to give you a gun and tell you this is a revolver and you put it at your head. The chances of the bullet, there is only one bullet in it. The chances of that bullet being on the halt itself at that particular moment one out of nine, but you just pull the trigger, let's see. Allahu Akbar. And you foolishly take it and say, right, let me try this. Boom. What will happen? Would any one of you do that? The answer is no. So we are not prepared to take a risk when it is one to nine in favor of survival. Allahu Akbar. Are you following what we are saying? We're not prepared to take that risk because we might lose our lives. But spiritually, we are prepared to take that risk every time when people are telling you, watch out, this is shirk and that is shirk. And we get angry and agitated and we tell them, who do you think you are? You know, you are a person. Everything is wrong according to you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draw us back to the, the deen that is pristine. And may he let us walk on the straight path in a way that when we get to him, we would have pleased him. As I said at the beginning of the talk, he be pleased with us and may we be pleased with what he has chosen for us and may it be the abode in paradise. I mean. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, something that really gives us goosebumps. لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ وَلَتَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ In Surah Zumar, Allah says to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, If you associate partners with us, 
if you have to engage in shirk, all your deeds, your good deeds will be wasted. Allahu Akbar. So that is the only time that your deeds are wasted when you have engaged in shirk, associated partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah forgive us. And this is why we say, when we do good deeds, a person has exercised morning and evening for one month and after that they sit with 30, 40 cakes and they have so much in terms of dairy products and red meat and so on and they say no i one month i actually exercised believe me maintain your level of health now that you have worked so hard to protect it if you are going to sit with all that red meat thinking that this has happened in the past you are foolish why waste your health nobody is going to look at you and say oh a long time ago you were a very healthy person they're going to look at you now the same applies to shirk if a person has done many good deeds in the past, then they engage in shirk. As the verse in Surah Zumar says, your deeds are wasted. Your condition right now is looked upon. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who can improve on a daily basis. So this is something very important. Then let's move on to something further. There are some people, the word used in the Quran in Surah Al-Ankabut is actually athqal. Athqal means weight, that which is heavy. وَلَا يَحْمِلُنَّ أَثْقَالَهُمْ وَأَثْقَالًا مَعَ أَثْقَالِهِمْ There are some people who will be carrying their excess baggage, their weight, and they will be carrying more baggage over and above their baggage. Who are those people? Listen to who they were. Allah says, and listen to who they are. May Allah save us from being amongst those. He says, the disbelievers told the believers, follow us and we take responsibility of your burden. Allahu Akbar. You hear them saying, Jesus died for your sins. So now you are definitely going to paradise. Where in the world is it part of justice to punish the most innocent and pious amongst us? in order to die for the murder, rape, and adultery of the rest. Allahu Akbar. The gravest injustice which is easily understood by man would never be perpetrated by the Lord of man. Allahu Akbar. Something quite simple and logical. And this is why the Quran says, when they tell you that you don't worry, just come to us, we will take care of your baggage. Allah says they are liars. And on the day of judgment, they will carry their own baggage and over and above that, the baggage of the lying that they diverted so many people with. And this is why we are taught in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مَنْ سَنَّ سُنَّةً سَيِّئَةً فَلَهُ وِزْرُهَا وَوِزْرُ مَنْ عَمِلَ بِهَا إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ لَا يَنْقُصُ ذَلِكَ مِنْ أَوْزَارِهِمْ شَيْءٍ Whoever sets a bad example, a bad precedent, you helped your friend to go to the club, you introduce someone to drugs, you introduce them to pornography, you encourage them to do something wrong, you did something, they saw it and followed you and that was wrong, then you bear the full sin of everyone who did it, seeing you or obeying your instruction and at the same time, anyone after that up to the day of judgment who followed those who followed you and followed those who followed those who followed you and followed those who followed those who followed those who followed you Allahu Akbar and so on my brothers and sisters it's not worth our while to teach people bad because that is the dead weight that will really result in the destruction of an individual on the day of Qiyamah the hadith says it the Quran says it subhanallah do not have that excess baggage it is not worth your while to introduce someone to a sin that you are committing when you are committing a sin, you can engage in forgiveness for it. But when you have introduced another 10, 20 people in the, meaning to the same sin, what will happen after you have sought forgiveness 
And after Allah has forgiven you for your engaging in it, your clock could be ticking because there are others who learned from you. Just like if you were to teach a good deed, the reward of it will be, would be multiplied. If you are to teach and promote a bad deed, you are guilty of the sin of all of them. Did you ever know that? So this is why when the Quran says, وَلَا تَزِرُوا وَازِرَةٌ وِزْرَ أُخْرَى No soul shall burden, shall shoulder the burden of another. The Quran makes it clear. You will not hold the baggage of someone else. Nowadays when you get to the airport, they ask you, is that your bag? Have you packed it? Do you know what's inside it? Did anyone else touch it? And so, you know, the world now asks many, many questions. And you tell them, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, you know. And come on, I know all those questions and the answers of them and so on. Be careful, my brothers and sisters. Someone who wants you eradicated can plant a little drug into your bag as you are entering the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And before you know it, two weeks later, they announce your execution in the newspapers. And the people are smiling. Why? Your baggage had something that was not yours in it. We are so worried. This is why check your baggage even if you are sure it is yours alone. Especially when entering countries where it is quite simple to flick you off if the need arises. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. We become fearful. But at the same time, we need to know that whilst we are taught that you will not shoulder the burden of another, there is an exception to that in the Quran and the Hadith has made it clear that there is an exception to that. What is the exception? When you have encouraged others to do bad or set a bad example, then it is considered as part of your baggage. That is why you will hold what they have done, not in totality, but the particular item that you taught them if it was bad. Allahu Akbar. I hope we follow this. So it is not a contradiction at all, but rather an explanation to say you are not carrying someone else's burden, but you are carrying the burden of your deeds, which led to that person doing something. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. So that is the second point that we have discussed this evening. The first was the issue of shirk and association of partnership with Allah. And the second is the issue of setting a bad example for others, my brothers and sisters. It is not worth our while really to teach others that which is bad. And it brings me straight to the third point. It is not worth our while to do that which is bad. It is very, very unhealthy. And again, I draw a medical parallel because everyone's health is very, very dear to them. So this is why it's important for us to give an example. When the doctor tells you, your cholesterol is very, very high and I think your arteries are blocked or they are blocked and you will have to from today go on to a tablet or medication called Cresta or whatever else it is in order to drop your levels of cholesterol and to govern this and that and you're going to need to stop eating this and that and engage in exercise. You see people walking for life. What that means, they join the foundation known as the Heart Foundation. And they go onto the beachfront marine drive, mashallah, and you find them pacing up and down, up and down. Why? Doctor told me. Doctor told me, mashallah, alhamdulillah. I wish the ulama were also doctors. Allahu Akbar. They are actually doctors, but spiritual doctors. Sometimes we have that cholesterol and more spiritually. We are dying. Our arteries are blocked. We are having a heart attack. But at the same time, when we are told, brother, that adultery, you need to leave it, this, you need to go, leave this, walk to the masjid and do this and do that, then we are not really bothered. We are not keen. We are not interested. Why? Because I don't feel it. Allahu Akbar. You will feel it. The spirituality that you feel when you have read the two raka'at of Salatul Fajr is amazing. Amazing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us Grant us steadfastness so that we fulfill the salah in a way that we can feel the shedding of the excess baggage as we say Allahu Akbar for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you do it correctly and you are willingly reading salah, like we've said in the past, there is a very big difference between someone who is fulfilling salah because they have to and someone who is fulfilling salah because they want to. Very big difference between the two. May we become from the latter rather than from the former but both of them are still okay they are better than the one who does not fulfill salah at all may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the change so my brothers and sisters it's important for us to know 
that for us to engage in sin, what it will do, it will add weight. It adds cholesterol to our spiritual system and it increases that which makes us heavy in the wrong way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about the baggage that brings us down in the dunya as well as in the akhirah. Social circles. Do you know that there are so many examples of even the previous prophets as well as the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions where they have forgiven one another in order to release some baggage that was holding them down or that would have held them down had they not engaged in forgiving people. What this means is we are encouraged very strongly to forgive one another. When they have wronged you, you forgive them. Can you do that? Allahu Akbar. The pressure that is released when you truly forgive someone and begin to make dua for them cannot be described. It can only be felt by the one who has done that. Let me give you one or two examples. Before I give the example, in fact, let me make mention of the fact that when you hold a grudge against someone, even if someone has wronged you, yes, you do have the right of revenge and justice and so on. It is there. If you read Surah Al-Shura, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَزَاءُ سَيِّئَةٍ سَيِّئَةٌ مِثْلُهَا فَمَنْ عَفَا وَأَصْلَحَ فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الظَّالِمِينَ the recompense of a bad deed is something similar to it. Someone does bad to you, you can revenge, you can react, you can retaliate similarly. That is your right. Yes. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever forgives and forgoes, it is better for them. Their reward is with Allah. It is better for you in many ways, even in this world. When you have not forgiven someone, there is a burden on your shoulder. You feel it. You actually have headaches and migraines. Your blood physically becomes thicker. Your health deteriorates only because you hate somebody. You don't like them. You don't want to forgive them. But when you can forgive them after they have wronged you openly, in that particular case, you will find that subhanallah, you have released yourself and you have allowed your health to improve physically and at the same time your reward is written with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now let me give you the example we will all know it of Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam what did his brothers not do to him that is the question in terms of evil they left no stone unturned trying to destroy the young boy out of jealousy and hatred outright enmity for their own sibling imagine a brother they planned against him they plotted against him and they executed the plans and the plots and allah says that allah is the one who plans subhanallah this is why don't worry people plan and plot against you you try your best develop your link with allah help yourself to protect yourself from that plan in whatever way allah has allowed you to the rest you leave it in the hands of allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Yusuf alayhi salatu wa salam asks his brothers. Qala hal alimtum ma fa'altum bi Yusuf wa akhihi idh antum jahilun. Do you know what you have done to Yusuf? Joseph may peace be upon him and his brother. Whilst the you lot were completely ignorant. They were shocked. Why? Nobody knew about what they did to Joseph. May peace be upon him. Besides him and them. So this could only be him. So they asked him a question. The way they look at him. They ask him, is it that you are that Yusuf, that brother of ours? He looked at them. He says, Ana Yusuf wa hadha akhi qad manna Allahu alayna innahu man yattaqi wa yasbir fa inna Allah la yudhi'u ajra al-muhsinin Indeed I am Yusuf and this is my brother 
Allah has blessed us and favored us. He's telling his brothers, Allah has favored us. Imagine, you wanted to take the favor of Allah away from us and Allah wanted otherwise and Allah's plan overrides my plan and yours. So here I am, here is my brother. Allah has favored us. And Allah has favored all of us because He has united us. That is also part and parcel of the meaning of that verse. قَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْنَا Allah has indeed blessed or favored us in a huge way. All of us. Not just me and him, but even you. Because today you have come. You have asked the question. We are united once again. And what does He say? Indeed, the one who maintains piety and who continues bearing patience for a while, Allah will never ever waste the deeds of those who do good. Never. My brothers and sisters from amongst us, there are some who are enduring great hardship and difficulty, whether it is in your marriage, whether it is with your children, with your parents, with those who do not want to understand you and your link with Allah, perhaps people who are harassing you at work, remember these words. إِنَّهُ مَنْ يَتَّقِ وَيَصْبِرْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضِيعُ أَجْرَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Indeed, he who maintains piety, your link with Allah must not dwindle, maintain it. If you maintain that piety and you constantly bear sabr and you are forbearing, you are restraining yourself from that which is wrong and at the same time you are accepting the decree of Allah and you are trying your best to do whatever you would like to achieve but you still thank Allah upon all conditions your deeds will never ever be wasted something somehow somewhere down the line will come in your direction that will put such a broad smile on your face that the past will be forgotten Allahu Akbar now Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam hears the statement from his brothers. Imagine when a person has wronged you and they now come face to face with you and they are trying to justify because they need you or for whatever other reason. They immediately come and say, no, you know, but this and but that because now you have gone far up. People, someone was guilty of burning your factory. They burnt it and mashallah, you started again and now your factory is 10 times the size of the one they burnt and they need stock. So they come to you and they don't know you know what happened. Did you say, but aren't you the one who burnt the factory down? And then they say, no, but you see this and but you see all those ifs and buts. Believe me, listen to what the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam did. They said, قَالُوا تَاللَّهِ لَقَدْ آثَرَكَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْنَا وَإِن كُنَّا لَخَاطِئِينَ Allahu Akbar. They said, by Allah, Allah has indeed raised you above us. He has given you preference over us. Look at this. آثَرَكَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْنَا Allah has given you preference over us. And we were from amongst those who were wrong. He did not wait for them to say, we are sorry. He told them, La I am holding no grudge against you today. Nothing. Allah will forgive you for what you have done. He is indeed most forgiving, most merciful. A bat of an eyelid and he forgave them for what they did for the last 40 years according to some narrations. How many of us are ready to release baggage in that way with our own brothers and sisters, with our spouses, with our children, with our parents, with our family members, 40 years of harassment. And we say, لا تثريب عليكم اليوم. I hold no grudge against you today. Allah will forgive you. He is most forgiving, most merciful. May He forgive me in the process. Wallahi, if we are prepared to release baggage in that particular way, then we are deserving of the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will indeed release other baggage that we may have and the bad deeds that we may have. He will release them after He sees how we released what someone did against us which was bad. And this brings me straight to another example. I'm sure we have come across Surah An-Nur, where the story of the accusation of Aisha radiallahu anha, the purest of the pure, 
of the women to exist. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon her. When she was accused of committing the sin, what happened? Something very, very serious occurred. Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu, her father. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, her husband. And the people are accusing her, and she is pure, of very high standing and status, the highest that a woman and a female could have had. Allahu Akbar. And one of the relatives of Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu, who was financially dependent upon Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu, decides to spread the rumor to others. You see, gossip is something very bad. It is a heavy, heavy burden. Stop gossiping because it is excess baggage. Believe me, unnecessarily, you are adding weight to yourself. You know, today I was sitting and I was thinking of a few points and something came to my mind that made me laugh. And I share it with you. I thought to myself, people do not like themselves when they have a bulge or two in the wrong place. Sometimes people get irritated to the degree of depression. I'm overweight now. My belly is popping out, you know. So when the wife is expecting, she tells the husband, you looking three months. Allahu Akbar. Allah protect us. May Allah really safeguard us. May he make the men, those who do not look pregnant. Allahu Akbar. So now, when I was thinking of it, I said, we don't like a bulge. We don't like excess on ourselves. Imagine if our sins came in the form of a little weight that had to be on your body. Perhaps we would be all oversized and shaped like really, you know, a fruit that has no direction and no shape to it. Allahu Akbar. And a fruit is also a good word. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Imagine the shape we would be if the sins we committed and the wrong we did was in the form of a bit of fat somewhere placed in our bodies. Allah safeguard us. And I thought about a few shapes and I started laughing. Allahu Akbar. And I said to myself, may Allah safeguard us. Allah has blessed us. Ya man dhahar al-jameel wa satar al qabih Oh you who has made apparent only that which is beautiful and has hidden that which is ugly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. So Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an, when he heard that this young boy, Mistah ibn Athatha radiallahu an, is spreading the rumor. Like I said, rumor spreading is the scourge of the age. At this moment in time, we have a new type of a rumor. A long time ago, when there was a rumor, they say they cannot be smoked without a fire. Have you heard that? But today, they can be smoke and fire without smoke and without fire. Allahu Akbar. I don't know if you understand. People can fabricate something from nothing. No even sent in that direction and people are spreading a story. And nowadays the mobile phone and the little apps that you have, you know, they make it so easy for you to sin. At the same apps can actually make it easy for you to shed the excess by encouraging and promoting goodness. Allahu Akbar by encouraging and promoting goodness. So remember, don't spread rumor, don't spread tale, don't gossip, don't backbite. And a clarification of the term backbiting, because many of us do not know what is the meaning of backbiting. People say, I don't backbite. Do you know the meaning of backbiting? It is by far one of the most dangerous forms of excess baggage, backbiting. People say, this man, this, and that man, that. And then you tell them, but don't talk about him because it's backbiting. They say, what are you talking about? It's true what I'm saying. But my brother, if it is true, it is called backbiting. If it is lie, it is called slander, which is worse. Why don't we understand that? Let us today send a message to at least 10 people to tell them the meaning of backbiting. Dhikruka akhaka bima yakrah. To mention that of your brother, meaning your fellow a human being that which they would dislike if they were present and heard it when it is true the last part of the statement is the most important when it is true so if someone was caught drinking alcohol in a club and then you start spreading all over the globe this man was caught drinking alcohol and it's true that is called backbiting but if he was not caught and you don't know and you did not see him and it was just a rumor and you spread it, it is now known as slander, which means that which is 
a total fabrication accusation without any form of substantiation so when it is substantiated and it is found to be true and correct it is now known as backbiting which is a major sin and it is a form of excess baggage that a lot of people are involved in and have without even knowing the sahaba radiallahu anhum asked the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the same question they asked him Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what if the person we are talking about really does have that quality we are talking about? He says, well, in that case, that is what backbiting is. And if he doesn't have it, then you have actually slandered him. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala protect us from that type of excess baggage as well. So Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, when he heard what happened with Mistah and the fact that this young man who was dependent upon him financially was spreading the accusation about his own daughter. He took a qasam, an oath. He says, I will never ever spend on this man again. No more. So verses were revealed in Surah An-Nur that are so powerful that we learn how to shed excess baggage and we learn how the burden is released from our backs in a way that we cannot describe, we can only actually taste it if we've engaged in it. Listen to what Allah tells Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an. The lesson is for everyone. But obviously the verses according to the reasons of revelation were revealed upon this particular incident. He says, وَلَا يَأْتَلِ أُنُوا الْفَضْلِ مِنْكُمْ وَالسَّعَةِ أَنْ يُؤْتُوا أُولِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَالْمُهَاجِرِينَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَالْيَعْفُوا وَالْيَصْفَحُوا أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ the people of virtue should not make an oath not to spend on those who are poor, who are relatives, who have made hijrah. They should not say, meaning the, the people of virtue should never make a promise that I will not spend on this man. Yet that man is a relative and he is poor and he has engaged in the, the hijrah or he has... Uh, good deeds and so on we should never ever do that learn to forgive and embrace do you not want allah to forgive you indeed he is most forgiving most merciful look at that verse forgive and embrace why forgive and why embrace because I want Allah to forgive me as well. So Allah says, you forgive them and I will forgive you. Don't you want my forgiveness? Well, if you want my forgiveness, a quick way of achieving it is by forgiving others. Because Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. And if you have shown a quality of forgiveness in you, even if it is to a small degree, Remember, Allah will show it to you in the biggest way possible because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always be over and above all of us when it comes to good qualities and when it comes to those qualities such as forgiveness and mercy and so on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. To me, this is an inspiration. The reason is, I have tried it and believe me, I invite you to try the same. People who have wronged you for years on end, Start making good dua for them and try to forgive them, release it, take it out and say, Ya Allah, grant them goodness, I forgive them. They don't need to know that you have forgiven them. They don't need to know it. You start feeling good, you feel light. You see them, it doesn't really hurt you that much anymore. Subhanallah, because you are now happy. What are they going to do to you? What are they going to harm you with? Perhaps a little inconvenience in the dunya, after that, you will go to paradise. I was speaking to one of the scholars who taught me, and he told me, you know, when you have an, a person you've had a misunderstanding with, you might not like a person and so on. Make dua for them. Forgive them. 
and ask Allah to grant them paradise as well. Allahu Akbar. What's the secret behind that? If through your dua they got paradise, I'm sure you will be there before them. Allahu Akbar. So if Allah had to tell you that, look, I will give you paradise on condition that that enemy of yours whom you did not get along with in your community will be your neighbor. What's your answer? Wallahi, it's a cheap deal. It's a very good bargain. I think neighbor or not neighbor, we don't mind so long as we are there, be focused. We want paradise. Whether they get it or not, it's not my problem. But if they get it, alhamdulillah, through my dua, if they get it, then inshallah, I will get it through the mercy of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah open our doors. So this is called releasing baggage. It's not easy to forgive. It's not easy to embrace, but it releases a lot of baggage. It literally releases you from the clutches of being enslaved in a way that causes even a health problem. May Allah open our doors. There are other issues that are mentioned that cause a lot of distress in this world and the next. One of them is jealousy. Becoming jealous of one another. A man opened a business exactly like yours across the road. Why are you burning? For what? Are you not a Muslim? Don't you believe that sustenance is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Let me give you an example. I'm sure most of us have been to the Middle Eastern countries, the Gulf countries. There are people who engage in good deeds and people who engage in bad deeds in any country. So yesterday I said, monkey see, monkey do. Someone asked me, what do you mean by that? What it means is, you know, sometimes we become so foolish that we see things and we just follow without even asking ourselves, is this right or wrong? That is what is, that is, what is meant. You see someone doing something and you do it because you saw them doing it or saying it. May Allah protect us. So a person asked me a question about, let me tell you what it was about. The shisha, you know, this little pipe that you get. And they say, look, this ruling of smoking, we know, not allowed. But what about this thing here? I said, it is the same ruling. They said, but they are doing it in Dubai. You see? So if they are doing it in Dubai, it does not mean it's right or wrong. They, they do it in Mecca. They do it right outside there. That does not make it right or wrong, brother. They are committing adultery in Dubai as well. It doesn't, that is no justification. The sin of someone else does not justify yours. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. But sometimes the good that is there, we overlook it. We are quick to say they're doing this there because it's bad and we want to do it. But when they are doing something good, then we don't even realize. Let me tell you one of the good points that has come out of that particular part of the world. If you want to buy a machine, an electronic machine, where do you go? You go to a market where there are only electronic shops. Have you seen that? You want to buy a little thobe, clothing. You go to a market where they only sell this. 300 shops all together. Subhanallah. That is the difference between them and a lot of us. If you have a hardware shop and your brother opens a hardware shop across the road, you are angry, upset, you stop talking, and there is no speech between you for the next 40 years. That's what happens to us. We didn't learn in Dubai. When they have one hardware shop, they call it the area of hardware shops. There are another 300 shops selling exactly the same stuff, perhaps almost at a similar price. Nobody hates the other and nothing happens in that direction. Why? I don't even want to say if some of them are Muslim or not. Someone was telling me that a lot of the businesses are actually owned by people who may not even be Muslim in terms of Hindu and so on. But the point being raised is, we become jealous of a person who opens a business across the road similar to ours and we are the ones who are Muslimin. Instead of becoming happy, when I was in Medina Munawwara, there was a time when someone came to buy a piece of clothing from the shop I was sitting in and the owner of the shop said, I have it, but the man across the road, no one has purchased from his shop throughout the day. So please go there. He has the same stock. He will give you at the same price and just istiftih lahu. Go and start the business for him at least for the day. It brought tears to my eyes. Who would say that? Today when the deal is done with someone else, we go and say, just cancel the deal. Come, I give you a better one. Allahu Akbar. La yabi' ala bay'i akhi. A Muslim will not sell upon the sale of his brother. No. 
That is us. So this is excess baggage. We hate one another for nothing. Your sustenance, what is written for you, will not miss you. That which got to you was never meant to miss you. And that which missed you was never ever meant to get to you. My brothers and sisters, there is no point in hating one another because he has more wealth, he has a happier home, he has children who are like this, and this one doesn't have. Everything is the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, be happy, release all that hatred, release the jealousy, release the envy, and that will actually help you walk very light in the earth. And even on the day of Qiyamah, the, the light part or the, the part of the scale which is meant to be light will be light Allahu Akbar amazing I hope and pray that what I have said has touched on some aspects which affect us in our lives may Allah open our doors life is a test that's what it is and we need to pass that particular test by ensuring that we do the right things just like when your health is beginning to fail and you go onto a diet making sure you do not eat this and you in fact eat this and that you need to understand and realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan in this dunya is such that if you are to follow it you will lead a life of goodness and a life full of happiness and joy you will be light light in the sense you will not have extra burdens that hold you down but when you get onto the scales of the day of qiyamah the weight will be dead right and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say for you is jannah may allah say that to myself and yourselves and this brings me to another verse of the quran the verse regarding those scales of the day of qiyamah when it really will be weighed and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the one whose deeds, whose good deeds, the weight of the good deeds is very heavy. They are the successful. So now here we are talking of the HDL. We are talking of that which is beneficial. If it is heavy, you have succeeded. As for the one whose deeds are very light, the good deeds, the scale of good is very, very light, lighter than the scale of bad. Allah says they have lost themselves because of the oppression. They have lost themselves. They oppressed themselves and perhaps even others. And for that reason, they did not know which side of the scale to make heavy and which side to make light. My brothers and sisters, every time we engage in salah, we have added a weight to the good side of the scale. Every time we abstain from a sin, we have added a weight to the good side of the scale. That is taken free of charge, so to speak. A quick example comes to my mind, and, and I'm going to say it because it might make you actually laugh. You see, when we travel and when you become a frequent flyer, you begin to learn some of the tricks of the trade. So what happens is people travel and they tell you, brother, you have excess luggage? Yes. Okay, I'll bring a golf bag with three golf sticks in it and inside there you can put all your stuff. But why? Because golf bags go for free. Sorry, I'm not teaching you a trick here. But what I'm telling you is, really, I was told this and I looked and I said, but that is cheating. I won't do that. I don't play golf. But they said, but that's how your weight will go. You can take your dates from Makkah in a golf bag with golf sticks. Because the international law states that your sports kit goes for free. Your child's, I think it's the, the, the push pram, goes for free. A few nappies and so on. In some airlines, most airlines go for free. So people have the nappy bag and inside they have something else. Allahu Akbar. Imagine how intelligent we are, my brothers and sisters, that to travel we actually know what to do to get across because that goes for free. When it comes to good deeds, we cannot cheat. You cannot have a deed outwardly good and inside it's all bamboo. No, you can't have that. 
You need to ensure that what is outside is inside as well. We don't want to cheat and deceive. And why I say this, when you abstain from sin, you have actually added the correct weight and you have released the weight from the wrong side. Released it totally. Imagine the way, the scale. And this is why I always say, if you notice in my talks, we always like to say, brothers and sisters, you spent years reading books, spend equivalent amount of years reading the Quran and the other spiritual books, which will take you into paradise. Because when you have tipped the scales on one side so much, you have prepared for your life in the dunya, not realizing that one day you have to get to the akhirah and then you don't have anything. May Allah open our doors. And why I started off this lecture by saying, may Allah make us serve the cause in whatever way possible for us. Some of us may have knowledge, we disseminate it. Some of us may have wealth, we use it. Some of us may have time, we spend it. Some of us may have expertise, we give it. Some of us may be able to do one or two things that others cannot. We use it in a humanitarian way or in a way to support the people of the deen, in a way to help mankind at large. And this is called service to Islam and the Muslims and humanity at large. Subhanallah. So people are given different fields. People are given different expertise. People have different inclinations. Use whatever you have at your disposal in the field of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And please Allah, my brothers and sisters, every time we do something that is evil, Wallahi, it adds a lot of weight. I can give you some examples and really many come to my mind. One of the biggest issues today is the issue of pornography. It is something that has overtaken and don't be surprised by what I'm saying. The globe at large. It is accessible in the pockets of the people. And you don't realize that the minute your eyes are set on something bad, it adds a huge burden onto your back and in your mind. And it contaminates your thinking and you pay for it. Believe me, no droplet of pornography has gone by without a heavy price that is paid for it somewhere down the aisle unless the person has engaged in tawbah. Believe me, the youth out here, it will never bring about goodness. Why are the divorce rates so high? Because people do not fulfill the rights of their spouse. Why don't they fulfill the rights of their spouses? Because to them, life is all about having fun and enjoying. And it's not about fulfillment of rights. Allahu Akbar. This is what it is. We have a spouse, a person who has worked with us, who has lived with us, provided us with children, sacrificed, dedicated. And the only words we have for them are bad words. What do we want? Those bad words will be a burden on our backs. We pay for them somewhere down the line. My brothers and sisters, I call on you to be the best to your spouses. Fear Allah regarding your spouses, your family members. Tomorrow we will speak about marriage inshallah. But before we get there, we need to warm up. We need to ask ourselves, how am I to my family members? When the Prophet wasallam clearly said the best from amongst you are those who are best to their own families. Subhanallah. Our spouses are suffering. A woman being oppressed to the degree that she cannot handle it anymore. May Allah protect us and vice versa sometimes. Really, it brings about tears to the eyes. When we hear what is going on, good people sometimes are oppressing their spouses. People whom we perceive as really brilliant people, sometimes they have no control over their tongues and they don't realize that what we are saying slices the heart of our spouses without even knowing. That is a burden. That is excess baggage. And you are burdening someone, oppressing them. You pay for it, my brothers and sisters. We don't want that. May Allah forgive us. And may those whom we have oppressed also forgive us. And may we make men's and may we really rectify our bad ways. This is excess baggage. And I told you the root of it is when we do not lower our gaze, we pay because it is a baggage, baggage that really we have. This is why the hadith says the gaze is like the spear of the devil. You know, you have a little buck or a deer or a little gazelle. If you look at it and you're a hunter, as soon as you see it, you, your eyes remain on it and your spear is waiting in order to really get to it and make sure you've got it down. So the hadith describes the gaze as that exactly. If you have now not controlled your gaze, 
perhaps it may lead you to something very bad because you won't be able to sleep at night because you saw something that is not yours, was not yours, will never be yours, but you are still having a sleepless night. That's why there was a young man who told me once, may Allah save God us all, really. He says, you know what, some of these women don't even know they give us sleepless nights. I said, they are not guilty, it's you. Why don't you look down, you'll sleep well. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So, it's because of our eyes, we haven't controlled them, you pay. So people say, what's wrong? I, I'm free to look. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, that argument, you cannot argue with Allah. When Allah gives you a ruling, it, He knows why. It's really good for you. There is not a single rule in Islam that has been laid in order to create stress in your life. In fact, every single rule in Islam has been created in order to make your life easy and to grant you a beautiful life full of honor and dignity and enjoyment such that when you get to the age of 60 and 70, if Allah has given you life, you are actually now looking forward to the meeting with Allah. Because even those who do not look forward to the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they too have to die. Amazing. They have to die. I'd rather die looking forward to the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than to die a death. And I still have to go. So my brothers and sisters, sin will bring about a lot of evil. When you utter a swear word from your mouth, it is a burden and it is excess baggage that really you don't need. A lie. When you utter a lie, it is baggage that really does not leave you. It sticks to you like glue. Because to protect that lie, you need to utter another 100,000 lies. May Allah protect us. Rather remain silent like a dumb fool than to utter a lie. May Allah forgive us, really. So these are some matters and issues that we really need to take seriously in our lives. Because a lot of us are walking around with much excess baggage that bogs us down in the dunya as well as the akhirah. And sometimes we say, why am I unhappy? Well, that's your baggage, brother and your sister. That's your baggage. You are the one who is responsible. Release it. Turn to Allah. Where is your salah? When last did you read Salatul Fajr? When last did you read any salah? My sister... When you do not want to cover your hair, and this is with all due respect to Muslimin, we are no judge. But it is our right to encourage people what is right and wrong. So please, the sisters who might not be covering their hair, don't say, I am judging you. No, we are not judgmental. We don't. Judging is left solely and only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this is just a point of encouragement. My sister, when you have not covered your hair, do you know that you pay for it somewhere down the line? Do you know that? Do you know that unless you engage in tawbah and asking Allah's forgiveness, sometimes things will happen in your life that are so stressful and you don't know why, but you exposed yourself to the men. And you are the one who did this and did that. So now there are five people fighting for you and you are already married with three children. Allahu Akbar. May Allah forgive us, really. And I've said something which is really a red button. It is happening. It is happening live in our lives. We've seen it. And the payment is made. Don't think that, you know what? I will enter the life of that rich man and I'll flick off his other wife and I'll do this and I'll do that and I will be happy. You will not be happy. It's temporary. There will come a time when the same thing you did will happen to you again. May Allah forgive us. Remember, to rectify things, you ask for forgiveness. Allah will rectify things. You ask for forgiveness. Don't be too proud and arrogant to say, I'm sorry. Never. You need to come forward and say, look, brother, I have wronged you. I am really very sorry. Forgive me. They might say, I'm not interested in forgiving you. Try again later. They have the right to say, I don't want to forgive you. Although we have taught you this evening and we have reminded ourselves, myself and yourselves, to say that when you forgive, you have released baggage. You have indeed done a noble deed. You are deserving now of the mercy of Allah, even more than had you not forgiven. Although not to forgive was also your right. Let's not be mistaken. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. When we eat that which is haram, when we consume riba and interest, and when we want to look for names in order to name interest with, so that we can disguise it. Remember, it is a burden. It is excess baggage. It needs to be shed. If not, it will also result in a very unhealthy life and an unhealthy life after death. We don't want that. Look at salah. The hadith says, the first thing that you will be asked about on the day of Qiyamah is your salah. If that is in order, the rest of your accounts will be made easy. If that is not in order, 
nothing else will be made easy. Have you known the hadith? Subhanallah. It reminds me of walking through when the revenue authority comes to your place, they look at your files and everything looks in order, so they go next door. But then they ask them for their files and they only have all a bunch of papers. They say, right, this is the place. We're going to be here for one week checking what you've been doing. Why? Because your files are not even looking in order. So when we arrive on the day of Qiyamah, your salah is in order, your files will be in order. The rest is okay. Just a matter of going through it. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us ease on that day. And I end with the point of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, you see the scales we have on the day of Qiyamah? The beauty of it is when you have done more good than bad, and the good is actually heavier than the bad, Allah's mercy will grant you entry into paradise, even though there may be some bad there. But the good is much more. This is why the hadith says, Follow up your bad deed with good deeds so that the bad is wiped out. How is it wiped out? By overpowering it, by becoming heavier than it on the scale, so making it insignificant. That's a hadith. And the hadith continues to say, When you treat people, treat them with goodness, good character. Treat people with good character and conduct because that is also a sign and that will also release a lot of baggage here in the dunya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. My brothers and sisters, we have said a lot this evening. And really we thank the brothers and sisters of this particular city, all the organizers and all those who have been involved in any way making this particular program a success. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gather us in paradise the same way he has gathered us here today. And all those who shall be listening to this later on, whenever it is even years down the line, we ask Allah to gather us all in paradise for indeed that is very easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Until we meet again inshallah tomorrow, we say, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad, subhanallahi wa bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayki.